Hello everybody, how you doing? It's Carl again. Today I want to talk about kind of an update to the Arduino PWM charge controller. So if you remember a while back, uh, I did this video about the PWM5 that Julian Eilett had designed. And then he made it on an Arduino, or based on an Arduino I should say. So Julian uh, wrote the code for the Arduino and then used his components. And instead of using a PIC microcontroller, he used the Arduino. So I developed this shield, and I'll put a link in the description about that video. And this works fine. I've used this on a lot of different projects, as in IRF3205. There is charge pump with these capa or these uh, diodes and these capacitors, and then there are a couple transistors, and it actually switch is through the high side. Downfall to this is this pulls about 8 milliamps. Now, as you can see, I have it on an Arduino that I designed just an Atmega 328 chip, a regular 78L05. And unfortunately, like I said, it draws the 8 milliamps. So, I was poking around on YouTube and I came across a video, I guess because I liked Julian's video, another guy named Adam Welch, he designed this. This is a Pro Mini, Arduino Pro Mini. It's the same components, just on a lot smaller board. Um, I did add another dia or another LED here, so I have two LEDs and terminal blocks, and this is another Arduino PWM charge controller, and this works fine as well. Uh, this pulls, I think it was four milliamps, if I'm not mistaken, might be three, but I can't quite remember. It's it's significant less. I know this is about eight, and this was significantly less. Well, the downfall is is you have this full. At Mega 328 chip, and it's a lot of wasted pins. I mean, we're using just a couple pins here. So he thought, Adam Welch thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could get it down to an AT Tiny 85? So he was poking around and he found a video, or a, not a video, but an article about how to get an extra PWM output out of the AT Tiny 85. And so he developed this circuit board using an AT Tiny 85. And in fact, I think you could use a 45. The code's pretty small, but the 85s are so inexpensive, you know, less than two bucks. So anyhow, it has PWM outputs on uh, pin 5, 6. That's the two capacitors here for the charge pump. There is an, a free output here, which I'm using to drive an LED, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then over here is an output, a PWM, PWM output, uh, controls the three transistors to control... Uh, this, I can't remember if this is a transistor or a MOSFET, the IRF3205. And then there's a analog input which sees the battery voltage and makes it all work. In his video, which I'll link Adam's video down below, he, had, he actually hadn't tried this yet. Now, one cool thing about this is it uses the 78L05, which is really low current uh, voltage regulator. And this one runs about one and a half to two milliamps, depending upon the LEDs. If you take the LEDs out, you can actually get it below one milliamp. But with the LEDs, of course, you're over uh, running, actually charging. It takes about four milliamps or so. Again, that's with these LEDs. Now, what I thought about was how could I control two LEDs, one for charging and one for charge with one pen. So let me show you. Let me get a piece of paper and I'll show you what I came up with. All right, now... I've never seen this technique done anywhere before, but certainly I'm not going to say I came up with it. So you have the uh, digital pin from the Arduino. And then what I did was I ran the LED. So what happens is you have the Arduino digital pin. This is the ground of the LED. Two positive through a 1K resistor to VCC. Also connected on that point is the po um, positive of the LED. This is the ground through a 1K resistor to ground. So what happens is if you write the pin high, it'll actually put 5 volts here down through this LED, through the ground, through the resistor, and then actually light this LED. And then inversely, if you ground it, it actually works the other way. So I could actually control two LEDs based upon one digital pin. And that's just because I'm manipulating the state of the pin. So I can't remember how I did it specifically for this one. Um, but if you write the pin low, I believe it turns the 
yellow light on, which means that it's charging. And if you write it a high, that means it turned the green light on, which means that it's fully charged. So anyhow, back to my original video here. What I decided to do was, I like this kind of design so much. And uh, Adam had a very nice setup. He had, you know, all these tracks, used a strip board, very nice. I went to Eagle and I developed my own board. And I'll put links to all this stuff down below, so if you want to use my board file, you can. And then I got them etched at through OSH Park. Cost me about $15 for the three boards. Here is the unpopulated board. Now, I am not a layout expert. I have very little experience actually laying out circuits, but this works fine for my purpose. I even had enough room that I had an ISP header installed, so if I want to program it, I don't have to keep pulling the chip in and out. The other thing I did was I actually put duplicated tracks for the voltage. So the battery comes in here on this screw terminal and actually runs the track on the top and on the bottom. That way I know I'm getting good sensor or good reading into the Arduino here. There's a couple mistakes like over here the words, see if this will focus, are actually backwards. I'm not really sure how that happened, but it did. And there's also some of the, the stuff I messed up on like the date is really tiny so it's really hard to read but anyhow it works for my purposes and here is what the board looks like completely laid out you can see I have my two LEDs my screw connectors for easy connection Let's see if I can get a better shot of that there uh, the charge comp capacitors and it's a neat little circuit board uh, this pulls about two milliamps without the LEDs. With the LEDs, it's about four. Some things that, if you're looking at redesigning the board or you just want to tweak the design, I think uh, an appropriate would be to move these LEDs. Now, the two carbon resistors here, 1K, they're actually for the LEDs, and I went with carbon because who cares? They're just LEDs. But it's hard to see. I actually have one of these installed for my motorcycle, and when it's on the wall, it's really hard to see those LEDs. So I think what I might do is move them up to the top so you can, you know, maybe up here so you can actually see them. Uh, what I was trying to do was minimize my dimension because, of course, through OSH Park, you pay for the size of the board. So if I was to get bigger, then I just spend more money. So, of course, that's always the easy solution. The other thing I didn't really like, these holes were kind of an afterthought, and they're just too thin. You can see here there's just not much circuit board left, and they're really too small for any kind of, you know, decent screw. I did find some kind of, like, small ones that fit, and they actually will hold it, so it's acceptable for my purposes. So, yeah, so anyhow, just a quick video about the Arduino PWM uh, solar charge controller. Thanks for watching, guys.